now that you know all my business. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's so good to be here tonight. I thank God for his goodness, his mercy, for bringing us over the airways and landing the plane and being a part of this great, great, great event. But I'd just like to stop right here and thank the Lord for being excellent. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. It literally means how exalted above every God, above every institution, above every political system. There's no other God like our God. I think he deserves a standing ovation. Amen. Amen, amen. Before you take your seats, I know you've been applauding her. I know you've been saluting her. But there can be no vision without a visionary. And I have watched her down through the years just put herself out in the middle of an ocean. And sometimes seemingly without a paddle. But she made it safely to the other side. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of faith to do things that other people are not doing. Eleven stayed in the boat where Peter walked on water. I want you to put your hands together for our Teresa Hairston. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'd like to honor the host pastor, none other than Bishop Morton. Bless you. Amen. I honor all of the honorees, all of those who have received special awards and of course the expediter and all of you and Bishop Seawright who introduced me I was sitting on pins and needles because you don't know what will come out of his mouth most of the time but it's good to see him and thank him so much and of course the pastor Tamara Bennett my friend God bless you now just hug somebody and tell them I'm glad you're here tonight You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I love to praise the Lord. I am the chief dancer, the chief shouter, the, the one who jumps higher in my church. Amen. I may be the senior pastor, but I dance through the whole service. Amen. I love to worship the Lord. He deserves all of the praise. Amen? Amen. We brought some products with us. And I have this um, series that I've done. And I really believe it will bless you. It's called Soul Ties. It depends on what your soul is tied to. That's going to determine where you go in life. Amen? And if you, if you listen to this, you will never be the same again. And accompanying it is my book, Satisfaction of the Soul. And, and, you know, Bishop Eddie Long said something tonight that we can do all of the outward things, but unless our religion changes what's on the inside, then we're really just faking it. Amen. But we can have a satisfied soul. Amen. And I believe if you read this book, you'll never be the same again. And I have a new book out, and, and I published it myself with my new publishing company. It's called The Other Side of This, and I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about the other side of the tragedy, the other side of the disappointment, the other side of the experience that will bring you joy and will bring clarity. Amen? Just go by the tape table if you have any money left. Amen? And pick up a couple of things. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 5. And... Um, I'm going to just read verses 1 through 6, and I'm going to focus on the 6th verse. That's Romans, the 5th chapter, verses 1 through 6, and I'm going to focus on the 6th verse. I hope you have your Bibles. And if you do, I'm going to trouble you again to stand, and this time you might lose 5 pounds, so don't get mad. 
if you just stand one more time. And there's somebody who doesn't have a Bible, you can read it on the screen. It's the King James Version of Romans chapter 5, beginning at the ver verse 1. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And here's the text. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the goody two shoe, for the ungodly. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. And the, the subject tonight, I was weak and he became my strength. Tell your neighbor, I was weak and he became my strength. I'm not going to be before you long, but I just would like to just kind of paint the picture and then you'll go home with the image in your mind. Um, the book of Romans is an epistle, but it is one of the most powerful epistles that Paul wrote. It's very systematic, very formal. But this particular epistle talks about the free gift that God has given us by faith alone. It is the epistle that gave rise to Martin Luther's great declaration, the just shall live by his faith. He wrote this epistle, you know, he had preached out all of Asia Minor, and he was always very progressive. He never got satisfied or got stuck. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to be stuck. Whenever he preached an area and established a church, he always had his eyes on the next area. He wanted to use all of his energies to reach the world for Jesus Christ. So he preached out Asia Minor, and now he had his eyes set on Rome to penetrate Europe. He had never been to Rome. He would like to go to Rome. And before he would go to Rome or they would receive him, he wanted to send a letter of introduction. How formal. How proper. Protocol. He wanted to make sure before he got there that they knew that what he believed, they believed, or what they should believe is what he believed. He wanted to make sure that they were theologically sound. I just wish that we would have more people that would make sure that you are theologically sound. You deserve it. Tell your neighbor, you deserve it. You don't need to be tickled. You don't need to be massaged. You don't need to be treated like a clown or a monkey. <laughs> you need to be anchored in the faith. He was speaking to two groups of people. He was speaking to the Gentiles who had come out of their paganism and had learned to receive Jesus Christ freely. And he was speaking to the Jew who had their monotheism, their history, their religion. But these two groups were having problems with each other. And he wanted to make sure that they came together at the foot of the cross. Tell your neighbor, at the foot of the cross. For you see, the cross is a great equalizer. Rich man, poor man, white man, black man. No matter who you are, male, female, boy, girl. When it comes to the cross, we're on the same level. He wanted to remind them of this magnificent salvation. And that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that makes us one. 
he also wanted to remind them of the privileges. Tell, tell your neighbor, you have privileges, you have privileges. Yeah. And one of the privileges was justification. Now, that's a foreign word to the, to the modern day church. Justification. justification. What do I need to know about justification when I have to pay my rent? What do I need to know about justification, you know, when I'm going through a divorce? What do you need to know about justification when I'm, I'm in foreclosure? You do need to know about justification so you could ride the storm and come out on the other side. What is justification? It's one of the foundation of the Christian faith. Now, if you're Buddhist, can't flow with this. If you're Hindu, can't flow with this. If you are looking at Serenity Saturday with Oprah Winfrey, you're not interested in this. But if you're Christian, you need to be on a solid foundation. And one of the things that keep you solid, even when you're knocked to the right and knocked to the left, is the doctrine of justification. What is justification? Justification, let me create the scene. Justification is I'm a color, I'm a raunchy, skunk, sinner, low down, rotten, depraved, wicked. Wicked, nothing in me good, absolutely nothing, every bit of me, each of my cells spelled sin. Standing in the courtroom of God, deserving eternal damnation. That's what I deserve. PhD, deserve it. Third grade education, deserve it. Lamborghini, deserve it. Hoopty, deserve it. I don't care what you have or don't have. We all have sinned. Come short. I know you don't like to hear that. No, we don't like to preach it. But I said we all have sinned. You see, when, when, you get, when I get through with this sermon, you're going to be happy. 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 You're going to be so happy. You're going to shine on one leg all the way to your car. You're going to be happy. We all have sinned and come short. So I'm standing there, I'm standing there, and I deserve to be condemned. Here comes my advocate, Jesus Christ. And all he does is hold out his hands and say, give her another chance. And then the father now looks at him standing in front of me with his blood-stained hands. Perfect sacrifice. Perfect sacrifice. Eternally efficacious. Eternally it works. Tell your neighbor, it's working right now. It's working right now. And God says, give her another chance. Not guilty. And that, 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 even in the court of our law, if you have been released from a crime, you cannot be accused and condemned for that crime again. So when he declared me not guilty, I was free eternally. Now listen to me. Somebody said that's heresy. No, 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 that's Bible, that's Bible. Therefore being justified, and in the original it means done once, and it doesn't have to be done again. Thank God for the original. I said done once. And doesn't have to be done again. That means he did such a good job. That it doesn't have to be done again. So I stand tonight not guilty. Come on and put your hands together. In the, oh you need to praise him ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's justification. It's not in my notes, but I'd like to share this. Sanctification, however, means even though I'm not guilty for the sin that I've committed just by being born, and now I am permanently connected to him, every day I've got to drop off some things so I could look like I'm justified. Because I came to him with baggage. 
And so every day I got to drop off a bag. It's called progressive sanctification. And it's done through the word. It's done through prayer. It's done through the Holy Spirit. So every day I'm being sanctified, but I'm justified permanently, permanently, permanently. I don't have to go back to God and say, justify me, please, Jesus, please, Jesus. No, no, no. That is a crazy prayer. All I got to do is say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I am not condemned. There is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That makes me happier than a Lamborghini. Come on and put your hands together. Just want to hear you praise him for being just. Listen. Now, Paul is encouraging these people and he's saying to them, this is what you have. You have this. You have it. If you're saved, you have it. You don't have to look anywhere else. You don't have to go on no television and have nobody take a whip and whip you and, 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 and take you through psychological cleansing. What is that? We're going to unsaved people to give us what we already have. Whatever happened to you? Why did we lose our mind? I have it. My guilt is gone. My sins are forgiven. I'm a legal child of the kingdom of heaven. I'm not a bastard, but I'm rightfully wrapped up and tied up in Jesus. And I don't need anybody to make me feel free. I'm free. Whom the son says free. Whom the sun sets free. Whom the sun sets free. Whom the sun sets free. See, and that's why we're in trouble. We don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, it won't work. Now, point one. Just point one. I just have two little points and I'm finished. The first point is back in the day. You hear saints talk about back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day testimonies. Back in the day I had more money. Back in the day, I was never broke. Ever since I got saved, things got worse. Back in the day. Don't you glorify back in the day. Ain't nothing good about back in the day. Because this is what Paul said to the Romans. He said here in the sixth verse, For when we were yet without strength. What does that mean? It literally means... We did not have the ability to resist sin. Before I got saved, I didn't have any power. I was devoid of power. But I never did anything wrong. I was devoid of power. But I never cursed or smoked or committed adultery. I was devoid of power. I was raised in the church. Worse, I was devoid of power. I didn't have anything in me to do good. Now, what we call good is, you know, being nice and kind and sweet and whatever. That's not what we're talking about. Anything to help me, to deliver me from the penalty of sin. Nothing in me, nothing in any institution, nothing in the world could save my soul. I had no strength to say no to the devil. As a matter of fact, I live in misery separated from my father. The next thing, I was ungodly. I'm saying I know because maybe some of you all didn't feel that way, but I was ungodly. What does ungodly mean? I didn't worship the true God. may have gone to church, may have even shouted, may have jumped up and down, but until I got saved, I did not worship the Lord. I did not seek him. As a matter of fact, Satan ruled. He enslaved my heart so I didn't have strength and Satan was ruling me and then I'm a sinner aiming for happiness but missing the mark. The word sinner means I missed the mark. You know, play darts, you throw it, and it doesn't get in the center. When you're not saved, you're always aiming, always aiming, always aiming, always missing the mark. Try that, still miserable. Try that, still angry. Try that, still disappointed. Try that, still suicidal. Try that, still can't. Always missing the mark. Deviating from God's commandment. Can't be faithful. Can't be faithful. Can't be loyal. Don't want him. Don't Stop singing the song about you wanted him. None of us wanted him. This flesh didn't want him. Uh, it's not that 
you wanted him. He wanted you. You see what I'm saying? That's what makes this so marvelous. That's why I shout every time I get a chance because I never wanted him. But in spite of my never wanted him, he always wanted me. Come on and put your hands together for a God that always wants you. Even when you're not warnable, there's such a word. Missing the mark. Don't have the strength. Don't want to worship. And it gets worse. The gradation is here. I was an enemy. The Bible said that we are enmity. We hated holiness. My flesh was hostile towards God. Oh, come on here. You weren't always this happy for Jesus. You weren't always raising your hand saying hallelujah and meant it. This flesh is hostile. God says go and we say stay. God says move and we say sit. God says jump and we lie down. Oh, anything that God, even after we get saved, there's still that little tinge of hostility. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Love. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for the courts above. Ladies and gentlemen, this flesh doesn't like him. But the Bible said, my second point. I know you're shocked. My second point. In due time. In due time. I'm weak, I'm trifling, I'm an enemy, I hate him, don't want him, love my flesh, love sin, don't want to stop sinning, but in due time. <laughs> don't you love it? You see, due time here, it, it talks about how Christ manifested himself when the world needed him most. It was a time when the Greco-Roman Empire was into its culture, its philosophy, its science. It was the age when people were walking around exchanging ideas, trying to ask the philosophical question, and what if? It was a time when the Jewish religion had become corrupted. The priests had now broken up the actual lineage of priesthood and now they were selling priesthood so the whole structure of the priesthood and the sacrificial system had lost its power and then you had the gentiles who were tired of the capricious gods had a god for this and the god came down and had sex and then the god ate the child and then the god doesn't love you so they got tired of the whole pantheon of mythological gods and they were looking for something real the time was right it was right on time it was proper time because people were experimenting and they were finding out that nothing would satisfy the longing of their soul. It was a fixed time because the Messiah prophesied to come. Genesis 49 and 10 on the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So it was a prophetic time. And then it was a favorable time. Rome had set it up. Common language, Greek. Coinage system for their, for their sacrifice. Connecting roadways for transportation. So everything was happening. And they thought it was happening for them. But it was set up for Jesus to come on the scene. It was the right time. And we are sitting in here tonight because God in due season snatched us from the hand of the enemy. You wouldn't be here tonight if he had allowed you to continue in sin. Oh, look back. Back in the day, you were getting ready to go to rock bottom. Sin was about to infect your body and infect your system. But in due time, in due time. And even after you got saved, you got into some mess. And it could have killed you. But in due time, the appropriate time, the prophetic time, God came and snatched you out of it. Oh, you better praise him tonight.
tonight for the love of God. Listen to me. It is not left up to our goodness. Because there's no good thing in me. It's not left up to performance. In the church, we reward you for performance. We reward you for being good, a good this, a good singer. And thank God we have good singers and good preachers. But in the eyes of God, it ain't got nothing to do with goodness. Because all of my righteousness is as filthy rags. I can't behave well and please him. I can't do good and get any kudos as you call it. Ah, It's not based on my goodness, but it's based on the goodness of the Lord. It's his righteousness. It's his mercy. It's his long suffering. Where would I be if he didn't die on the cross? Where would I be if he didn't cover me? Do time. The world was waiting. Things had gotten worse. And in due time, he showed up. Galatians 4 and 4, but when the time had fully come, God sent his what? Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Hebrews 9, 26, but now he has appeared once and for all at the end of ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. 1 Peter 1 and 18, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed. Wake up, hear this, go, don't, don't go to sleep because I ain't moaning yet. Ah, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Tell your neighbor, he did it for you. He did it for you. He did it for you. Ah, all of that funk, all of that skunk, all of that nastiness. My God, and this flesh can get funky and skunky. Yeah, I know you got cologne on, but I said it can get funky and skunky. Oh, you might be speaking in a lot of tongues, but every now and then, this flesh gets funky and skunky. You can wave your hand and tremble and act like we ain't never done nothing wrong. But every now and then, we smell the funky and the skunky. Oh, but thank God that he stepped out of glory. Come on and put your hands together. I just want to hear your prayer. In due time, what did he do in due time? Priesthood messed up. Philosophy ain't working. Why? What did he do? He died. Now, I know we don't shout over that anymore. That ain't no shouting piece in, in the Pentecostal church that I grew up in where the mothers didn't have any theological training. They didn't know Greek from Hebrew. But all you had to say was Jesus died and it was church. <laughs> Today we got everything high tech, this high tech, that. And we say Jesus died and you go to sleep. But I'm still shouting that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised. For my iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I'm healed. I said he died, ladies and gentlemen. I said he died. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus dying for you. That's what you need to hear. You got the car, you're still miserable. You got the next husband, you're still miserable got power and you're still miserable got fame and you're still hi Hezekiah got fame and you're still miserable you understand but we forgot what makes this thing real it's not real because I'm in this building but it's real three o'clock in the morning when you ain't there to say go ahead I need to know that he died all right, what does that mean? What does that mean? Romans 4, 25, he was delivered over to death for our sins. He was delivered over to death. For our, you, hear, you, hear, you, hear, you hear the pronoun? You hear the pronoun? He was not delivered over to death for his sin. Hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it. Hear it. That one little word brings it all together. He was delivered to death for our... You all didn't catch that yet. Because you're distracted. Bring your mind back in now. He was delivered over to death for, uh-uh, not his sin, but, uh, did you hear that? He was delivered over to death for our, oh, you ain't got no sin, you ain't.
ain't got no sin. Oh, oh, you that wonderful. He was delivered. I'm going to shout before it's over. He was delivered from my sin. Let me get personal then. Since you left the room. He was delivered from my sins. And was raised to life for my justification. Tell your neighbor I'm not guilty tonight. I'm not guilty. Look at me funny all you want to. But I stand not guilty. Chains fell off. Lord have mercy. I ain't doing no time for nobody. I said chains I don't know how I'm going to finish this because I feel a hollering coming. Romans 5 and 8. But God commended his love toward us. In that while we were raking up the sin. In that while we were humping and bumping. In that while we were smoking and dipping. In that while we were cutting and fighting. In that while we were hating and cutting each other's throat. I said while we were sinning, he kept on dying. Oh, you deserve to give him a praise in here tonight for dying. Greater love hath no man than this. Then a man should what? Lay down his life for his what? Look what he call you. Look what he call you. The reason why we ain't excited because we don't know what friendship is. Ask one of your cut buddies to take the bullet for you. And they'll change their telephone numbers. But greater love. No man than this. That he, he didn't. Nobody took it from him. He laid it down. No man taketh my life. But I lay it down. And I got the power to pick it up again. Ephesians 2 and 4. But because of this great love for us. This great love for us. This great love for us. Tell your name it's a great love. It's a great love. It's a different kind of love. It's a different kind of love. It's a great love. It's a great love. It ain't no ordinary love. It's a love that you're looking for in people. It's the love that you've given your life over to. You've searched the world all over. Ah, uh, you open up and expose your innards, uh, hoping that somebody can give you this great love. That's what you're looking for. Huh? Oh, come on. We got into a mess because we're looking for great love. What's the great love? To accept to and know the worst about you. To know you ain't no good and still want to invest in you. To know you will quit and you're disloyal, but still keep on loving you. Oh, you ain't gonna find that nowhere, honey. Stop your searching right now. This is a different kind of love. A love that sees me and wants me. Even when I don't want him. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I said it's great. Great. Great, great, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. So he died. He died. I, I, and, and I just want to read you a doctor's report of the crucifixion. Since he won't believe the Bible, you know, just let me just give you a since you're so educated and you can only remember science let me just read you a scientific explanation of what happened to your savior on my and mine who did it for me he didn't have to do it for himself you only die like that for sinners so this medical doctor said the cross is placed on the ground and the exhausted man is quickly thrown backwards with his shoulders against the wood. The ligonier or the soldier feels for the depression at the front of the wrist. He drives a heavy square wrought iron nail through the wrist deep into the wood. Quickly he moves to the other side and does the same thing to the other wrist and pull the arms tightly to allow some flex movement. The cross is then lifted up into place and the left foot is pressed backward against the right foot with both feet extended, toes downward, and a nail is driven through the arch of each, leaving the knees flexed. The victim is now crucified. 
as he slowly sags down with more weight on the nails and the wrist, excruciating, fiery pain shoots along the fingers, up the arms to explode in the brain. The nails and the wrists are putting pressure on the medium nerves as he pushes himself upward to avoid this stretching movement. He places a full weight on the nail through his feet. Again, he feels the searing agony of the nail tearing through the nerves between the bones of his feet. As the arms fatigue, cramps sweep through his muscles, knotting them relentless and throbbing pain. With these cramps comes inability to push himself upward to breathe. Air can be drawn into the lungs, but not exhaled. He fights to raise himself in order to get even one nil of breath. Finally, carbon dioxide builds up in the lungs and in the bloodstream, and the cramps partially subsided. Spasmatically, he's able to push himself upward to exhale and bring in life-giving oxygen. Hours of limitless pains, cycles of twisting, joint renting cramps, intermittent partial asphyxiation, searing pain as tissue is torn from his lacerated back as he moves up and down against rough timber. The agony begins, a deep crushing pain in the chest as the pericardium slowly fills with serum and begins to press in his heart. It's almost over. The loss of fluid has reached a crucial level. The compressed heart is struggling to pump the sluggish blood. The tortured lungs are making frantic effort to get some breath. He can feel the chill of death creeping in his tissue. Finally, he allows his body to die. All of this was done for you. Now come on and put your hands together. Want to hear you praise it? Or oh, you ain't happy? I said you ain't happy. But listen. He died for who? The Bible said he died for the ungodly. Now, now you, you, you say to some saints about ungodly and they get an attitude. They go to rebuking and acting like you're a demon. Because people don't believe that they're sinners saved by grace. You see, they don't believe that they were ungodly. Let me tell you just a little bit about ungodliness. So every time you get cute and beside yourself. Every time you want to come to church and only think about what you can get and don't think about what you've already gotten. Every time you want to try another religion. Every time you want to yoga and deep breathe and meditate and focus on some kind of channeling, you better come on back to the cross. Every time you want to stay away from church and backslide and leave and go somewhere else, uh, you better come on back to this. I said he died for the ungodly. What's an ungodly? You see, Adam set it up for us. Adam, Adam, Adam. When Adam fell, all the strength left. He lost his spiritual power. He lost the image of God, the righteousness of true holiness. Uh, we are the ungodly because we have lost our strength. We lost all power to worship God properly. Soon as the next generation came in, murder came in. And then after murder, perverted, perverted music came in. As Jubal, perverted music came in. And right at the perverted music, they stopped being vegetarian and they started killing meat uh, and eating meat. Uh, and then they started making weapons of war. So it went from one gradation to the other. So don't tell me that sin doesn't metastasize. One little drop like leprosy. Next thing you know, it heats up the whole body. Adam opened the door and messed us up real bad. So we are sinners. We are unhappy. We are not peaceful. We lost our relationship with God. We are enemies. We indulge in sin. Uh, evil acts. We are fixed rooted habits. Our mind is poisoned by sin. Uh, we are aversion to goodness. We are an enmity to God. We are hostile towards his word. We hate his demand. We hasten the man that he puts in our life. One of the greatest problems with 
church today. They hate the discipline uh, that God put on this year, for not put on us. Uh, uh, they hate boundaries and restrictions. Uh, they think that because they're saved, they should be able to do everything. Uh, and then this hyper, this hyper grace that we're talking about, where you can be free to do anything you want to do, and God will forgive you. It's damning ever. Uh, I said it's hostile towards God. Uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. I said if you love me, keep my commandments. If you want me, do what I tell you to do. Oh, I feel a praise right here. I need somebody to help me. I just got to get through this, but I want to stop right here and praise him. Come on now, put your hands together. I feel a hallelujah in my... So we are ungodly. Ungodly literally means we're irreverent. We deliberately withhold from God what's due to him. We're in battle and array to fight against his will. We're rebellious, ignorant, and arrogant. But the Bible said he died for us. Listen to me. I don't know about you, but the thing that we're looking for, we already have. As soon as people find out the worst about you, they abandon you. As soon as people see your dirty laundry, they run from you. As soon as people see your stink, they want to get rid of you. But God smells it every day. Uh, he knew it was going to stink before we were born. Before we got here, he saw the stink. But the Bible said he kept on dying. He didn't die for a good man. He didn't die for a holy woman. He didn't die for perfect people. It blows my mind. Mine. What kind of God is this uh, that can love me like that? Uh, what kind of God is this uh, that can see my low downness uh, and keep on pulling uh, and keep on drawing uh, and keep on loving? His name is Jesus. Uh, come on and stand on your feet. Now, well, why? Why am I, why am I preaching this? First of all, unless you know the value of something, you will abuse it. Unless you understand what has been done for you, you will ignore it. Unless you embrace it, you will not walk in it. And we have neglected. Let me apologize. We have given you everything. We have given you prophecy. We have given you titles. We have told you how to point your finger to it and get it. But we didn't tell you how to get rid of the guilt. We didn't tell you that even on your worst day, that God still loves you. So you kept on backsliding. You see, it's the awareness of what God has done for you that constrains you. It's knowing how he died for you keeps you from going too far. But if you don't know what he has done for you, you keep on moving, 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 and you keep on spouting. But when you read something like this, and uh, when you get the understanding like this, uh, it pulls you together and say, Lord, I don't deserve it, but I'm so glad you did it. Uh, and even when the temptation comes, uh, I can quote the scripture. He died for me. I don't have to submit to sin. Uh, he died to set me free. Sin has no more dominion over me. I have a choice. Uh, the sinner doesn't have a choice, uh, but I have a choice. Because uh, anybody that loves me that bad, I got to love them back. Uh, Come on and put your hands together and thank him. I said thank him. Come on and thank him. Listen. The church has created a place for us to function without intelligence. We know the emotional route. We know 
the entertainment route. We know the social route. We know the community. Most of us know each other in here. It's a community. But there's one route that we have played down. And that's the Calvary route. When I think about what he did for me, not only that, his blood is still doing it. You see, he's got that kind of blood, you understand. It ain't like my blood. My blood can't do nothing. As a matter of fact, my blood can cause me to die. Get a little disease in my blood and I'm out of here. So ain't nothing good about my blood. Ain't nothing good about my mama's blood. She's 102 years old, but her blood can't save me. My God, ain't nothing good about none of our blood. But his blood is so awesome that even 2,000 years later, it's still washing sin. Oh, come on. Even 2,000 years later, it's still healing bodies. Even 2,000 years later, it's still loosing depression. It's still pulling people out of cages. And that's why I've got to praise him. And you have a right to praise him. You're justified. You're being sanctified. And one day you're going to be glorified. And it's because of Calvary, he brought you out. I said he brought you out and you don't have to go back in. Now you come on and praise him. Come on, lift your voice up. Come on and praise him. God. You don't need any more prophecies. All you need is to know I've been declared not guilty. I'm a legal daughter of the Lord. And the Lord is working the mess out of me every day. Every day there's another mess he's working. And when I seek him, he works it out. And as I get closer to him, I become more like him. Because he did such a perfect job. I don't have to kill goat. don't have to kill chicken. don't have to sprinkle nothing on an altar. You ancestral worship people. I don't have to break no chicken leg. I don't have to play no incantation. I just have to raise my hand and say thank you. <laughs> oh, that's why this conference is so key. You see, now you can worship him with something in your mind. What you have in your mind, Calvary. And when I lift my hands like this, I'm awfully grateful. You see, I'm not just praising him for things. I'm praising him for my eternality. Ah, oh, eternally, I belong to him. And no demon can pluck me out of his hand. Did you hear what I said? Eternally, I belong to him. And no demon can pluck me out of his hand. Come on and praise him with all of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not be tossed about in 2014 with every wind and doctrine. We will be a people of sound faith, strong faith, deliverance through faith, healing through faith. Because our faith is not based on a feeling. It's not based on your opinion of me. It's not based on whether I'm good or bad. It's based on what Jesus did. If he didn't die, then you could judge me. But because he died. <laughs> so years I spent in vanity and pride. Caring not that my Lord was crucified. Knowing not that it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy. Woo! There was grace and grace was free. Pardon. Pardon. There was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Ooh, this is better than a new car, saints, at Calvary. Oh, the love that 
true salvation is back. Oh, the grace that brought it down to me. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary. Yes, at Calvary. Raise your hand for mercy. Mercy. second like you were weak come on have mercy gentlemen we took Calvary from you and we replaced it with a whole lot of Hollywood we took Calvary from you and replaced it with a whole lot of broken promises but tonight go get Calvary back <laughs> oh bless the name of the Lord Yee! but that's not the end of the story before I sit down I got to bring it to conclusion he didn't just hang on the cross. He didn't just whip sin. He didn't just put the devil in his place. But the Bible said he went down in the grave and he conquered death. He conquered the grave. But on the third day, he rose triumphantly. Come on and give him praise. Oh, you ain't praising him. I said he rose. And because he's alive, I can live. And because he's alive, I can overcome. And because he's alive, I got a second chance. And because he conquered death, he can conquer my fear. He can conquer my past. He can conquer my shame. He can conquer my shame. He can conquer my shame. Do I have a church that believes it? Come on and give him glory in here tonight. Come on and praise him with all your heart. We love you so. And then the other boat said, "Me, in an anani also to boho ya. Em an anani ni anana mo go che ma boho. In an anani ni on don 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 don. Come on and praise him. There's a praise in the air to boho ya ba. There's a healing in all to boho sabande." Come on, you're coming up now. You're coming out of your past now. Come on, let it go. Come on, let it go. Na 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 na. Come on and give them glory. Shame coming off of you now. Emma na 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 the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, it dwells in you. I just want to hear your praise, everybody also. Glory to God. Now listen to me. I want those of you who really want to connect with what Jesus did for you. Tell your neighbor, I'm not dressing it up tonight. I'm not dressing it up. I got a whole lot of stuff that God delivered me from. 
Don't you try to act cute in here. I don't care if you're a prophet, priest, or king. There's a whole lot of stuff that we got delivered from. There's a whole lot of hole he brought us out of. And if you're telling the truth, he's still bringing us out. Hey, God help me. And there's a bringing out spirit in here tonight. I said there's a bringing out. Come on and praise him one more time. It's a worship place. It's a place of worship. If you came to worship, as you worship, you're coming up. As you worship, chains fall off. As you worship, your mind gets delivered. So come on and give it to him. Finish work of Calvary. Resurrection power. Finish work of Calvary. Resurrection power. Finish work of Calvary. Resurrection power. Come on in the old Come on, church. Get it back. 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 Come on and get it back. Get it back. Finish work of Calvary. Resurrection power. Now come on and praise him a little bit. Give a Glory to God. Just turn around. Turn around and grab somebody. And you're going to make little circles of twos or threes. And I declare that God is getting ready to bring the remnant church. The church out of Hollywood and Tinseltown. And bring us back to a solid foundation. So make a little circle wherever you are. Nobody should be standing alone. And close a circle. Glory to God. You have theology. Tell your neighbor, I got proper theology. I got proper theology. I'm not just in church jumping. I know what I believe. And I know it works for me. So tell your neighbor, tonight, 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 tonight. I remember when I was weak. And couldn't want God. I remember when I was weak. I didn't know how to reach out to God. But in due time. Proper time. Right time. God reached out. And grabbed me just in time. And I just want to take time out to praise him for Calvary, for resurrection power. So come on and praise him like you mean it. Come on and praise him a little bit. Come on and praise We're going to celebrate the cross. I'm tired of shouting out of new shoes, stilettos, weaves, cars, and positions and power. I want to celebrate the cross. The cross makes a difference in my life. The cross turned me into the right direction. And the cross keeps me from going in the wrong direction so you may not want to shout because you don't feel like you got anything out of it but I got the cross and I got resurrection power just when I'm about to slip he grabs me just in time now unto him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless tell your neighbor one day I'm going to be faultless so before I get there I'm going to shout anyhow so come on and rejoice Come on and praise it. Glory to God, glory to God. We celebrate tonight, we celebrate our heritage. Tell your neighbor I'm celebrating my heritage. I got a God the heritage. Now, Sister Hairston, as long as Jesus is exalted, this conference 
will never miss its purpose. As long as Jesus is talked about and that the blood prevails and that the Holy Ghost runs the ship, anything that tries to invade it got to go. Because the cross is too powerful. Sin can't stand up under the cross. So I speak a new level of anointing upon this conference. That the name of the Lord will always be elevated. And that the person and work of Jesus Christ will always be exalted. And no flesh will glory in his sight. So come on and thank God for the cross and the resurrection in your life. Hug somebody and tell them, I got it, I got it, I got it. Tell somebody, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got clarity. what I'm talking about but it doesn't mean that you don't need to know him so we're going to stop right here and say ladies and gentlemen I present to you Jesus Christ the savior of the world he died for you whether you understand it or not his death brings you life and if you want real life all I want to do is come and say I want Jesus and we will lead you into a prayer and this prayer will begin a relationship just raise your hand I want Jesus I don't want church I want Jesus because I can be in church and still don't have Jesus anybody here tonight come we don't want to end the service just with our joy we want to have joy for you too anyone here would like to receive Jesus just raise your hand and walk out of your seat and we will pray for you right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. No one is coming. Anyone coming? If not, I want you to come. And I want you to bring an offering and put it on this altar. I'm dropping another $10. Because I'm giving into what I believe is a place where you can come and celebrate the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I don't want you to hesitate. Just come and drop something on the altar and go back to your seat. And you're too slow. You should be coming now. As a matter of fact, you should be running. Amen. Because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of my investment. Amen. He gave his whole life. And I just want to give back to the church. I just want to give so that the church can further the gospel. This is for the furtherance of the gospel. Amen. And don't be slow about it. And go back to your seat. And get ready to receive the visionary. Amen. Praise the Lord.